favorite carp spots and uh, it's been pretty crazy already um, I'm just getting everything set up I just get the camera on the tripod and uh, I just had a screaming take and when I set into it I felt the weight of the fish but my line was still down tangled up in the bobbin around the bite alarm and we had a crack off right away uh, so like not even not even five minutes in the water and we already had a screaming take so I'm pretty optimistic this morning it, uh, it rained pretty much all day yesterday and through the night. I was here two nights ago, got a few small carp and uh, a few small catfish. So I'm hoping at least a couple of fish this morning. I got about three hours and uh, it looks good so far. So let's just hope another one comes in and picks up the line. I've got a new rig tide thrown in there. And, uh, yeah, best of luck for us so far. Well, I'm not sure what's going on this morning, but uh, just had another screaming take, and I set the hook again. This time, no tangles around the bobbin, no nothing. I felt the weight of the fish. It was definitely a good fish. Uh, I would say it was definitely giving me a, a good battle to say it was probably in and around eight to 10 pounds. Um, and then it just was gone. And I'm not sure what happened, but uh, my hook link broke. I'm using 15 pound mono, it uh, shouldn't be having any issues, but this is the second break off I've had with two, two good takes so far this morning, so I uh, figure I'll take a minute to show you the rig that I'm actually using. So what I'm starting with is uh, just an inline pair lead, uh, it's one ounce, you can see it's got the anti-tangle sleeve just above it, just to help keep the, uh, the line pushed away. I've got that free running, I don't have it stuck with any beads or anything like that so it, it definitely can travel the fish doesn't feel the resistance except for on the take because I have my size 20 size 10 swivel just kind of wedged into the bottom a bit on that swivel I've got another anti-tangle sleeve just to help push the hook away and then I'm only going with 10 to 12 inches there we go 10 to 12 inches of uh, of mono for a hook link, like I said, 15 pound. Normally I use a, a braided hook link with a hair rig, but I've somehow managed to lose my my, um, my baiting needle. I don't know where it went. I must have lost it here the other night and now it's gone, so I'm just going with a standard rig of just corn straight on the hook. Um, it's a you know time-tested technique as well, so there's no harm in that. And I've definitely put the hook into two fish this morning, just the line's failing on me for some reason. And uh, at the end of the hook link, I'm going with a size size four. See how close you can see it. Size four carp hook. They're good strong wire hooks. They're super sharp. They're, they're sharper than any trout hooks I have. Uh, so definitely some of the best hooks I've, I've used as far as hooking power and holding power. And then all I'm doing is just loading up that hook with five or six pieces of corn. Um, if I would have had my baiting needle, I'd be using boilies this morning. I was getting some really good takes on them the other night. So we'll have to pick up a new baiting needle this afternoon. So I'm gonna get this rig tied up. I'm gonna get the line back in, and hopefully it won't be too long before we get another good take. And if the line breaks on that one, I'll be changing the spool on my reel right away.
aggressive little bites from a seven inch catfish on a size four hook. I don't know how he got it in his mouth, but he did. So let's get him back. We're gonna try and get a nice decent carp. After. We are after carp, but if we get a couple of bigger catfish, I'll be happy. I think he got me with one of his spikes. Let's get him back in the water. Well, I would uh, gladly take a carp anytime. Yet another catfish. A little bit of blood from the hook. Size 4 hook is pretty damn big for. Uh, for such a little guy, but steady, steady bites, but I'm into a group of cats. So I'm gonna have to, I think, move my line a little bit deeper. That seems to be where I was getting the, the more aggressive takes that were breaking me off this morning. So come on, let's try and get a carp. I'm just gonna take a minute to tell you about my, uh, the way I'm baiting up my area. Baits are coming, the bites are coming pretty steady, so I wanna make sure that still paying attention. Um, I'm fishing with corn, so obviously I want to have corn in my baited area, and uh, I'm dispersing everything with a slingshot. Uh, pretty big slingshot with a little cone. This is actually a slingshot for firing out boilies, but I find that the way I do my bait is uh, it's a little bit more practical to use this one than the ones designed for more particle uh, baited areas. So the mix that I'm using, is, I'm not sure how well you can see that, there's a couple of PVA bags in there. Um, I've got just loose dog food. Okay, just some cheap dog food I bought from the pet store. Um, so there's lots of whole bits of that, and then a lot of it really ground up. I ground up with a coffee grinder so I can get that fine powder in there to help kind of put a little bit of a cloud in the water uh, as it sinks and as they stir through it. Um, the next part of my ground bait mix is the the mixed hamster feed um, so it's got like freeze-dried peas and corn and small pellets um, small seeds things like that I find that that has, they all break down or rehydrate there's peanuts and stuff in there so it gives me a, a wide variety of things to help draw the fish in and also help keep them in there uh, little bits of carrots and stuff like that sunflower seeds and the next thing that I have in there, uh, obviously dried corn is in there as well. Little critters running around in the grass. Um, the, the other thing that I have in here is also um, birdseed, uh, a pigeon mix actually. Uh, I find that that's been really good at keeping them, keeping them interested in sticking around. Uh, so what I'm doing you know, because this is this slingshot's more designed for boilies instead of particles, the particles really technically don't fly out that well. They tend to stick to the cone. You don't get a whole lot of distance. So what I do is I take my dry mix, uh, a lot of the whole dog food, right in the bottom of the cone, and then some of the loose seed and things like that just above it. Then I take a small little handful of corn just on top of all of that in the slingshot. That seems to prevent anything from sticking in the slingshot. Gives me good distance and it gives a good, really good spread. It, it opens up really wide so I'm only fishing 30 to 40 yards out, maybe 50 at the most, and I will get a spread hitting the water. That was a big fish jump. I'll get a spread hitting the water that's probably about 20 to 25 feet in diameter. So a really nice wide area. Um, I don't want too much bait concentrated in one tiny spot. I want it spread out so that the fish are actually 
you know, moving around and, and they're actually picking up little bits here and there, not really focused on one specific spot because I'm not putting any real attention to making sure my hook bait lands in exactly the same spot every time. I don't want them to get wary of, okay, if I go into this little area, I know I'm, there's a trap there. I want to keep putting my hook bait kind of all over that 25 foot diameter circle so that they never really know where it is. They can't focus on avoiding a specific spot. They just, they're gonna mill around, they're gonna find that bait, they're gonna eat it, and then hopefully come across my hook bait. So I'm gonna fire this one out there. I've been, I started off the morning before I put my line out, I think three catapults of bait out into the spot. That got them in there. I let that sit for about 10 minutes while I got everything else ready. And then two minutes after I put the line in, I had that scream and take that uh, unfortunately broke off when it tangled around my, my bite alarm. Um, after that, anytime I recast, uh, so if I recast because I haven't had a bite in a few minutes, usually like you're getting a, a nibble from a catfish or something within five or 10 minutes of it being in the water. So if you haven't gotten one, I've just been recasting, making sure I still got bait on my hook. Um, and anytime I've gotten a fish, it, as soon as I get the fish in, unhook it, fire one catapult of bait out there, get my hook bait ready, you know, fish released, what have you. And then right away, another catapult as soon as my line's in the water. And uh, it's, it's kept the fish in there. Seems like mostly catfish today. But uh, I know there's carp in there. I've hooked two of them and lost them both uh, due to break off. But I've also been seeing a lot of feeding activity in the area. So uh, I know it's working. So I'm going to fire this out and hopefully we'll get another bite soon. thing is that when you've got a tiny little family of baby ducks this mix is excellent for them it's good for them no harm it's not gonna fill overfill them like bread like most people give them you know and they're cute too Finally, we get a carp on the mat. No crack off. And there was gonna be no losing this fish. He's, wow, he's ever hooked good. Like I said, those the carp hooks are just some of the best manufactured hooks I've used for any species. Good side. What a pig. Oh. Come here, you. Come here. Oh. Yes. What a beauty. More critters in the grass checking me out here. Oh, that's a great fish. He didn't take it very hard. I thought it was another catfish biting and Man, look at the, just look at the thickness on him. I'm gonna have to weigh that guy. Okay. Wait right there, buddy. Let's get the scales. Pounds. Oh. Now get 
better look at you. I'm gonna get you back in the water. There we go. Just a hair over 13 pounds on my scale. What a beauty fish. That's what we came here for. And the nice thing is, only having three hours to come out this morning, I've only used up an hour and a half. So we still got some time. Time to get some more. Now it's on. I just had another screaming take. It's been about, about 15, 20 minutes since I've had a good bite. About a half hour since I got that, that uh, 13 pound carp. And I just got another great fish on and it screamed, like just screamed. I set the hook and it went right across the creek, almost to that one big stump. I don't know how well you can see it over there. Uh, but like the line, he stayed just under the surface and went all the way across and one big thrash and as soon as he turned, hook came out. I thought I had a really good hook hold on him. Uh, I guess, I guess not. So it's uh, it's slowed down, but I'm I'm getting more of the the larger or more aggressive takes. Let's say the catfish seem to have backed off. I noticed that the current in the river has actually sped up. It's uh, it's the current's been flowing west this morning. It was flowing east two nights ago when I was here, and I got one carp and one catfish, and that was pretty much it for the night. Um, today it's flowing west, and I've had, what, now three lost carp, a 13-pounder that we landed, and I've had nine catfish. I uh, haven't put all the catfish on camera because the rain's been on and off, so without, without my umbrella, I can't seem to find a way to get the camera, keep the camera dry. But, uh, man, it's been wonderful activity this morning. I'm just the three biggest fish that I've hooked today, or at least the ones that felt the, th the three biggest. Um, two of them were break-offs and one the hook pulled. So I got more corn on. I'm going to get back out there. definitely been picking up. Believe it or not, I actually had another carp break me off. This one I actually fought for several minutes before he was gone. So, so I got mad and I changed the spool on my reel. I completely redid my rig and Hold still. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, after changing the, the spool and redoing the rig, probably two minutes. This little beauty. It's about, uh, I think it's about eight or nine pounds. The, uh, you know, not quite, not quite double digits, but nice fish. Really nice fish. 
real happy to get that one. I'm gonna get back in there because while the carp are biting, I wanna make sure I maximize my time in the water. So I'll get this guy back. What weeded me up as he came into shore. I thought for sure he was gonna come off. Just the way my luck's been this morning with so many so many larger fish getting getting away on me. It's a beauty. About six or seven pounds, not too huge. Another nice one. I, you know, they're all all these ones, even the small ones are thick. And uh, I'm gonna uh, I think next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up a clip of the one I got a couple of days ago. There's another beauty. We'll be getting them with uh, some really chunky bellies. So yeah, the next fish I'm gonna show you is the one I got a couple of days ago. We're gonna get this guy back. Nice fish. I think that pretty much wraps up my session for today. Um, put in about three and a half hours. We ended up with, uh, I think, eight or nine small catfish, um, four, four carp that actually made the unhooking mat, and uh, four carp that broke us off, um, or me off. So, a very, very productive day, probably the most productive. I've had out of this spot in the few short weeks I've started fishing it and uh, yeah quite pleased um, still getting the odd bite but I think it's slowed down enough that it's time to pack it in right there they're, they're, they're active everywhere just under the surface but uh, I think they've pretty much turned off the feed bag so I'm gonna get packing up and head out and uh, see you the next time
Thank you.